Source Wall. Behind it is the single greatest secret of the universe. This is as far as I dare to go. Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Beyond the Source Wall. And today's episode is going to be a focus on a Batman comic that came out when I was probably like eight or nine, maybe. Or you know, I'm actually, maybe I was 10 or 11, actually, when this came out. I think this was the early 90s. And it's written by someone who I claim to be my mentor in comics, although we've never, I've never actually learned directly from uh, Archie Goodwin. But Archie Goodwin was someone that made an impact on me at a very young age and was one of the first people that I started to learn about that was behind the scenes in comics. I saw his name in a lot of things that I was reading and a lot of things that I was enjoying and things that were very personal to me, like this story here, which is called Batman Night Cries. And this is a book they recently re-released and I'm glad they did because it gave me the you know, inspiration to kind of talk about it. But after rereading it, I realized why I've never really talked about this comic or mentioned it too many times on the shows that I do because um, it's personal. It's uh, It hurts reading this book. Actually, there's a scene in this book that, that brings me to tears almost every single time. The art is by Scott Hampton, uh, who does a phenomenal job with like this great watercolor mix with painting and style. And it, it's it's beautiful. It's it's nothing short of beautiful and haunting and heartbreaking and sad and tragic and awful. It, it shows you some of the worst in humanity in this book, um, but also some of the best. It also shows you some of the worst in yourself and in tries to at least inspire you to change that awfulness. This is not a story with Batman fighting the Joker. This is not a story versus you know, Two-Face or Catwoman or Mr. Freeze. This is Batman against the worst side of the human spirit. And what that, what facing that does to him and to Jim Gordon. Archie Goodwin, he wrote a lot of stuff uh, and edited a lot. And he was the first person I learned about what an editor is and uh, what an editor does. You know, it, that changes obviously over the years and stuff, what editors do, but at least what Archie did at the time. And what I noticed is after I learned who he was, I never got to meet him at a lot of conventions as a kid, but I wanted to because I wanted to tell him how important a book like this was to me. And so what I would do is I would see people in the comic industry that work at DC, you know, like Dan Jurgens and after Superman died and Louis Simonson, who I'm a big fan of. And uh, I would ask them, you know, do you know Archie Goodwin? <laughs> like. That's how much this guy impacted me, and we never really knew each other. He wrote this story that I I wonder I wonder what the inspiration for it was. If it was personal to him, or if it was just something he felt like needed to be addressed in a comic book so that people could talk about it. The book starts off and it's got this like National Geographic introduction. It's literally a quote, I think, from like a like a wildlife book or something that came out in 1990. And it uh, talks about bats and how they're nocturnal and how they use sonar and kind of like the basics of bats, but why they use, why they have these abilities, like some of them seeing in the dark and stuff and how it protects them and shields them from things. And that kind of comes back later at the end because Batman is kind of fundamentally changed by this story and he's, he's a little broken by it. Um, you know, people think of, you know, Dark Knight Returns and I think about all these dark tales of Batman, the, the killing joke and things. But I don't see people talk about this book. I don't think a lot of people know this book exists. Uh, even hardcore comic book readers, I'm not sure they know this book exists because this is one of the most gut-wrenching Batman stories that's out there. And you can feel the change in Batman as a character by the end to where you could see where someone who... Maybe if you grew up watching Adam West's show like I did, um, and then you saw you know, the Michael Keaton Batman movie, it was such a stark contrast. You were like, whoa, well, you know, what happened to Batman? <laughs> you know, and uh, this comic book is is kind of like that transition where it's like, okay, you're familiar with like a, a more, a less intense Batman, you know, he's kind of a detective, but it's not like as brutal as uh, that it has become over the years. 
So Archie decided to tell this story that kind of transitioned you into that, where it starts off and Batman and Gordon are just two regular guys doing their thing, and then they both get really altered uh, internally by the events of this storyline. Batman becomes a little gruffer and a little darker, and Gordon actually faces his demons and finds a way to bring a little light in, into his life, <laughs> somehow. Uh, that's the power of Jim Gordon, though, if you read Killing Joke. That guy, he won't break. And he won't break because he looks up to Batman and respects him. And he thinks if he breaks, something in Batman might break. When I was rereading this, it reminded me how much I love Archie and how much his impact on the comic book world, or how much impact he had on the comic book world. And fans like me who, he doesn't know I exist, <laughs> but yet, Every time I wrote a comic book, every time I edited a comic book, everything I knew about story structure and, and, and breaking down stuff and, and trying to get the best out of people, it all came from stories that I heard about Archie Goodwin. So um, that's why I dedicate this episode to him. Uh, rest in peace, you know, he's, he's still my mentor even years after he's gone and rereading this like brought me back to that state. Gordon, Jim Gordon, is in very soon after being promoted to Commissioner Gordon. So he's just now Commissioner. This is like day two of him being Commissioner. And the mayor wants to see him. You know, we got to do fundraisers. We got to do this. We got to do that. You got you to be political now and delegate your work off to, you know, your captains and your sergeants and all that stuff and, and your police chiefs. And, and you need to be Commissioner and you have a bigger role now. And he struggles with that role because it's it's not work to an extent. It's, uh, it's, it's dipping into the world of corrupt politicians and things. And Gordon doesn't want to be that. He came to Gotham to do some good and to get a second chance. And he already had a rocky start in Batman Year One uh, and then cheated on his wife and, you know, and, uh, and you know, challenged dirty cops and everything and worked with the Batman, which was you know, uh, highly <laughs> not liked among the police force because um, he's a vigilante. And, He's now commissioner and he's earned everybody's trust, but now what does he do with it? So it's a really interesting story to see for Jim Gordon because he's still having marital problems. His son, uh, James Jr., uh, Jimmy, is a big part of the story. You can actually even see that maybe where the idea that Jimmy becomes a serial killer when he grows up, where that might come from. Uh, and it comes from his interactions with his father, I think, in stories like this. Gordon is not... He's a good man, but he, he he's flawed, like big time. He's still trying to get over the cheating on his wife, you know, situation. His wife is still trying to get over that. Her name's Barbara. It's weird that they named their kids Barbara Jr. and James Jr. It's so weird. Uh, but um, but still, you know, like they're they're having marital problems, and in the midst of all this there's a heinous series of murders going on where families are being killed. Um, there's like a dad is killed and drowned in the bathtub, like he's held un under the water and his throat is slit, I think. And then his wife and child are laying dead right next to him. They were forced to watch um, before they were killed. And then there's another family later where the dad's head gets thrown through the TV. His name's Rizzoli, he's like a mobster guy. And um, he's pushing some new drug called Boost. So Batman is on the case for boost. He's like, oh, this new drug is hitting our street. It's, it's amplifying adrenaline and rage in people. I think that has something to do with these family murders because I think Rizzoli, he's a mob guy who was like, had a clean record up until recently because he probably saw a business opportunity to move these drugs through the city. And he probably worked with you know, these other people. And those are the families that are showing up dead. So it could be a gang war thing. But Gordon's not convinced actually. Gordon's a little like, I don't know what this is like uh, it, it could be that but I want to explore all options because well he's the dang commissioner now and he's not really supposed to have be this hands-on but uh, he he's taken this very personal and throughout the story Jim Gordy, Gordon is remembering um, moments of his dad hitting him as a kid that his dad was abusive and so that leads to James or Jim Gordon being kind of abusive to Sarah and James Jr. at times uh, not to where he full on hits them, but he does like raise his fist and he, he gets pretty close. His rage takes over and he, uh, that's the moment in the book about halfway through where he realizes, what am I doing? I'm about to hit my son. 
Um, and then also there's a scene where James Jr. hears uh, Commissioner Gordon yelling at Barbara and he's about to hit her. And James Jr. comes in holding you know, his dad's gun, aiming it right at his dad. And uh, luckily the gun wasn't cocked. So you know, when he pulled the trigger, nothing happened. It didn't fire or anything. But uh, it was a big wake up call. Those moments were a big wake up call for Jim in the story to see that he's going down this spiral, that this city of Gotham is dragging him down in the muck with it. And he's not facing his flaws head on. And at that moment he realizes, you know, after his son almost shoots him and after it, because he almost hit his wife, after he almost hits his son the next day, he says, you know what, um, you know, Barbara, take our son and, and go somewhere, go home to see your family or whatever. Give me some time so I can go to therapy for a while. And then maybe when you come back, we can do a couples therapy and we can progress. And he goes, you're right. I, I've been thinking a lot about my dad lately because of these cases where these dads and families are being killed. And it's reminding me of my dad for some reason. And, uh, and it's bringing out all these horrible rage fits in me. And I need to address them head on and get some help. So that's where Jim Gordon in the story finds some light. Batman's tr chasing down this boost drug thing um, and he comes across uh, this new hospital that's opening up of uh, these two one percenters uh, Brian and Sybil McLean uh, brother and sister and Sybil yeah she she has like a little thing with Bruce Wayne not where they flirt but she's kind of, but she could like there might be something there but she really doesn't like Bruce Wayne too much and he shows up at a gala event with like bloody knuckles because obviously he's Batman um and they don't know that but uh they start to assume you know because they help kids who went through traumatic experiences as kids whether it was physical abuse sexual abuse things like that um they help them at this hospital and help them break the chain, as they say. They say that all of our memories and all of our experiences in life are linked as chain links. And the reason they're chain links is because um, the bad things that we do are hard to break, much like chains. Um, so they perceive that because Bruce watched his family get killed when he was a kid, that he just maybe lashes out and you know, maybe he's part of like a fight club or a boxing ring or something like that. You know, that's what they think of him. Um, they're just like, oh, he's just a rich boy who probably punches things when he gets mad or whatever. They don't think anything of him, really. Um, but Bruce has taken an interest in them and their work because he likes the idea, the hopefulness of breaking the chain of, OK, you were abused as a child. Don't abuse your children when you get older. You got to break the chain. You know, you were sexually assaulted as a kid. You got to understand that wasn't your fault. You didn't do anything wrong and you, you need to you need to not do that stuff when you get older. That's what the whole book is about is breaking the chain. That's the message, the theme of it. And Batman, um, his chains are strengthening through this. He's struggling with this case uh, when he starts to piece together. Him and Gordon start seeing that there's a reason why these families were killed and it's not because of drug related. Um, the dads in these families abused the the wife and kids that's why they were killed and so the dad was killed in front of the wife and kids in these families and then the families were killed to free them so they won't have to break the chain later or fail to break the chain later they can now be free and go to the afterlife and and die innocent people before they repeat the cycle of abuse according to the killer that's what the killer thinks that they're doing so batman is scarred by this approach to um, cleansing and saving people. Uh, and it makes him a, a harsher dude by the end of this story. He can't really wrap his head around what's going on. Jim's trying to better himself in this and, and Batman wants to, but he's, he's really struggling with the filth that he's in uh, dealing with this killer, these monsters. And uh, the McLean brother and sister, they have someone that works with them named Josh Adams, who was a soldier overseas. Like, I think he was in South Africa or something, or South America. And he was like a, a mercenary type guy. And you start to learn more about his past and that he, that went on his missions, there were women and children that were being killed, uh, sometimes by his hand because he was ordered to and sometimes not. So Brian McLean, uh, the guy who was opening this hospital with his sister, he is you know, he was assigned to Josh's unit to be their therapist. 
uh, so that every night after a mission uh, where something bad like that happened, you know, Brian was there to talk to them and say, hey, this wasn't your fault. You're following orders. They're awful orders. I wish people didn't have to do this. He was there to comfort them and try to ease them, uh, you know, away from the horror and the nightmares they have from the horrible things they have to do so that they don't repeat the cycle of abuse. So Brian's very much like on that path along with his sister. They want to help people break those chains, you know, and, and, and you know, break the, uh, the cycle. We always talk about on this channel, I say it all the time, I talk about um, getting off your hamster wheel and, you know, repeating things over and over, same thing every day, same action, same, you know, good, bad, whatever, just every day the same. And uh, I get all that from this book, the breaking the chains thing. I, I prefer the hamster wheel analogy better, uh, but the, the chain thing I get to, uh, you know, if you're using it as a metaphor for, like I said, our experiences and our memories linked together and you have to break those so that way you don't repeat that behavior. There's a moment in this book where there's two witnesses that believe Batman is the killer. There's a young boy and a young girl. The young girl's mute, she won't talk, she can't talk. Um, so, uh, but she, during the investigation, she saw Batman and freaked out and pointed at him and it made, you know, made the police go like, oh, what's, why is she pointing at him? Like, you know, is he the killer? Then the next, uh, victim was a young boy. He survived, uh, somehow, like I think he was hiding or something and he survived. Um, and he was uh, confessing that the person who killed his dad, uh, was Batman. So there was two full families that got killed, and then there was uh, two other instances where fathers were killed, but the kids were left alive. This is when Batman and Gordon start realizing that it's about abuse because they talk to the young boy, and he he says, he, he says, Batman came in and stopped my dad while we were playing a game. And, uh, you know, Gordon's like, what game were you playing? And he said, we were playing boys and girls. He said, uh, you know, the game that dad plays the boy and I play the girl. And you just see these toys that he was, you know, little action figures he was playing with. And there's like a dad-ish looking toy and a little boy toy. And he's, they're on top of each other. So this boy thinks Batman killed his dad. And the girl, although she can't speak, alluded to maybe Batman was the, the perpetrator that took out her dad. So Bruce goes back to the little girl and says, hey, look, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I, I scare you. I don't dress like this to scare good people. So he takes off his mask and he says, I'm just a person and I don't want to hurt you. He goes, but I know someone did hurt you. And uh, I know someone hurt your dad too because he hurt you. So I need your help figuring out who it was. You think she's not much help at first because she just draws a picture of a bat and you're like, okay, she's just saying it's Batman. But Batman has been, and Bruce Wayne have been doing their detective work and they find out that Josh Adams, the friend of the McLeans, uh, the soldier, was part of a, a mercenary unit, like I said, called the Vampires. And uh, they basically had kind of like bat war paint on their face. So he goes to confront Josh Adams and it turns out it's actually not Josh. Josh confesses. He says, I noticed that uh, since these murders have been happening, that Brian, our doctor, who was in South America with us, who took me in and get, brought, brought me here, gave me a job to help other people break the chain because I broke my chain, I noticed he's been going out at night. And so I, tonight I decided to follow him and then you stopped me. He goes, but I think Brian might be the killer. And Batman says, why would he do that? He's a doctor, he helps people. And Josh says, yeah, it's, but it's because he, went on, he was there when we went on those missions. And one day he asked us, to take him on a mission where we had to kill women and children. And I think that broke him. And I think he's the killer. 
and we need to stop them. And Josh is right. And Batman and Josh and Gordon team up to take down Brian uh, as he's standing there holding a baby with a gun to its head, ready to kill it. And then at the last second, you know, Batman's trying to talk to him. We got to break the chain. We got to stop this. Put the gun down. Don't don't continue this cycle. We, you you said it yourself. You got to break the chain, man. You got to do this. And Brian um, can't. And he admits it to himself, and then he puts the turns the gun on himself and kills himself. This story is when I remember when that movie Eight Millimeter came out. Joel Schumacher, you know, made Batman and Robin, which we all, you know, kind of laugh at. Um, rest in peace, Joel Schumacher. I I like that guy. He's awesome. He made Lost Boys, one of my favorite movies falling down so many good movies and uh he he came up with a movie called eight millimeter he directed a movie called eight millimeter after batman and robin and i remember watching that going jesus this is a really dark horrible story i can't believe the guy who made batman and robin can make a story like this because this feels like a batman story it's like a detective story this reminds me of night cries this reminds me of something that brutal and vicious because you find out that one of the fathers, the one that got his head shoved through the TV, the reason he was killed that way was because he was into snuff films and, uh, and he used his kid in some of them. I don't know where Archie got the idea for this story. I don't know why Scott Hampton decided, you know, he was gonna be the artist to draw it. I don't know how this book came together. I know why people don't talk about it though. It is, it is a hard read for a comic book. You think comic books, you're like, ah, they're for kids or whatever. A lot of them are, sure. A lot of them are, are for teens, you know. Comic books helped me improve my vocabulary when I was little. I read comics, you know, my whole life now. This book is, it's hard to, to get through, but it is really good. It's a really good Batman comic. And uh, I'm sorry, I'm just like a mess while talking about it, but it's hard to face the things that the characters go through in this book. Um, it's, uh, it's hard to know that there are people out there that hurt in this way. And that people still go through stuff like this. It's awful. So I decided to make the tough decision to face my own issues with the content of this book and bring it to you guys and talk about it because I don't see a lot of people out there talking about this book. And I know there are people out there that hurt uh, and probably in ways like this and it's, it's awful. So all I can say is that if you are hurting, you should talk to somebody that you trust not it's hard to say this you, you don't know you're being hurt sometimes so if you if you think you might be being hurt talk to somebody that that, that isn't the person that you think is hurting you the message of this book about breaking the chain about getting off your hamster wheel about not repeating the sins that were done to you. It's a powerful message. It's one that everybody needs to know because at some point in everyone's life, they go through something really tough. Maybe not this tough, maybe not this intense, but there are people out there that do. So um, I'm glad this book exists. As hard as it is for me to read and as hard it was for me to talk to you guys about today and just being like a big baby emotional uh, <laughs> just bitch about it um but this stuff's hard for me to, to to talk about and it's hard for me to deal with sometimes so uh you know if, if you read this book be ready just be ready for the stuff in it there's some very good writing archie goodwin's an amazing writer scott hampton's art is phenomenal in this book some images i'm sure popped up on screen while i was talking about this book 
there's a great detective story here. But then there's just these few moments that just cut you right in half. Um, so be ready for that if you read this book. Um, and just, uh, you know, <laughs> I don't know, it's one of those things where it's hard to recommend. It's like, do I think people should read this book? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Um, but is it going to be for everybody? No, it isn't. Um, but it's, uh, it's one of the best Batman books out there. And I think it's worth discussing and the content, the message in it is worth getting out there. And so thank you for watching this episode, for watching me just kind of get through this. Um, and, uh, you know, I, there were some things I didn't spoil, some things I didn't share, but for the most part, like I said, Batman, he's a, he's a little darker by the end of this and, and Gordon is trying to be a little lighter and they're both trying to be a little lighter, but Batman's definitely lost at the end of this story. And, uh, and Gordon's on a path to maybe trying to get out of the muck and Batman is broken because he realizes he has to stay in the muck. Um, because he can't break the chain that of his life. So, thanks for watching this episode. I know it was a long one. Um, let me know your comments down below, and uh, I'll talk about you know <laughs> you know other stories that are aren't so heartbreaking in the future. Um, but uh, Batman Night Cries by Archie Goodwin, Scott Hampton, uh, Archie. Thanks for writing this book. Thanks for everything you've contributed to comics. Thanks for being a, a teacher to me, having never met me, but thank you for, for, you know, everything you did in comics, man. It, it meant a lot to me, and I'm sure it meant a lot to other people that work in the comic industry. And I'm sure a lot of fans out there who don't even realize they know your name uh, they'll start looking through their comics, their older comics, and they'll see your name and they'll go, oh crap, this is that guy. He's awesome. He, he was. He, he, he was a ball buster at times from what I hear, but um, he wanted everybody's best. And he felt that fans deserved creators best. And he felt that um, fans deserved his best and that the company they worked for deserved everyone's best. And by doing that, I think he put out a lot of great stuff uh, with his name on it, including this. So... If you feel up to it, give it a try. And uh, if you do read it, let me know your thoughts down below. Thanks so much. See you in the future. Peace.